Good morning, everybody. It's so good to be here with you this morning. Um, as you know, we have come to the last month of this interesting year, and Christmas is just around the corner. I'm sure you're all excited, although we'll have to do Christmas a little bit differently this year. You might have seen in the notices, a lot is happening here at City Hill, so if you're not part of us, do come and join us. Now, talking about Christmas, one of the things that comes to our mind when we think about Christmas is Christmas gift. Um, people go around trying to buy the perfect gift. And this is one of the most difficult things when you, when you think about a Christmas gift, to pin down the perfect gift. Uh, and what is a perfect gift? And that's what I'm going to be talking about today. I'm going to be talking about perfect gift today. And this would hopefully help you with your Christmas shopping in addition to the um, spiritual essence that it carries. Let me try and uh, define what a perfect gift is using three qualifiers. Now, a perfect gift is all about the recipient. Um, it's not about your preference. It's not about what you can afford. It's not about which shop is nearby. It's about the recipient. And the second qualifier is it has to meet some real needs of, of the recipient. Now, this would require you to have a working relationship with the recipient. If you don't know that person, how can you know what he needs? So this is what I would say the second qualifier is. And the third qualifier is um, that the relevance of the gift that you buy should be durable. You wouldn't want to buy something that, that's just going to be used for a couple of days. And as a matter of fact, a lot of gifts that we receive, it lands in the attic or it's out of use in a few days or months. But there are some gifts that the recipient would hold on to and the relevance of that would stay for a very long time. And in some cases, uh, the relevance of this gift would increase with time. So these are the three qualifiers of a perfect gift. Now I would like to talk to you about a perfect gift that we've been given by our creator. Let me start with a story. Since the creation, God reached out to humanity in various ways to draw them close to him. He used patriarchs, prophets, priests, laws and commandments to draw humanity close to him. Much of this story revolved around um, a group of people who were the descendants of a man called Abraham, who set out from his homeland, from, from a culture of idolatry and unrighteousness, to seek God and the inheritance that he promised. And this journey, it lasted for many generations. We just did a, did a series on the book of Exodus, where we covered a lot of it. And God gave laws and commandments, and he gave them a framework in, so that he can communicate with them. But they kept wandering away from God. So God sent prophets their way to, to, to convict them of the disobedience, to bring them back to him. But they kept ignoring it, and God kept sending prophets. Finally, the prophetic voices halted in around 450 BC with prophet Malachi. And um, it followed, it marked the beginning of um, a 400 years of dark ages, a time of silence where there is no rec written record of God's interaction with humanity. But after this 400 years of silence, we see a glimmer of hope in the form of a star uh, that caught the attention of three wise men. Now these three wise men, they decided to follow the star and that led them to a baby boy in a manger. Little did they know that this baby boy was going to transform the world. It was the fulfillment of one of the last prophecies of prophet Malachi before the start of the Dark Ages. He said that a son of righteousness is going to rise with healing on its wings. So that prophecy was, was, was being fulfilled right in front of their eyes. A new era of hope was dawning. Heaven was declaring that God has not given upon humanity. He was gifting humanity with a new hope, a new hope for future. Now let me try and explain what this new hope is. You can't embark on any mission or any adventure without hope. Without hope, um, it, it just cannot happen. You cannot just go any further. It doesn't have life without hope. Now hope has three characteristics. So the first one is, in most of the cases, hope is powered by one or more promises. So I just got married. So when you exchange your marriage vows, you're giving hope to your partner through the promises that you make of a better tomorrow, of a better future together. 
this is why it's important to, to verify, to understand the credibility of the promise giver before you accept those promises. The hope that we've been given as a perfect gift from God is anchored on the promises that he has made. Now, unlike human being, his promises cannot be shaken. They stand forever. They are powerful. His words are powerful. His promises are powerful. We heard about this man, Abraham, earlier. So when Abraham received God's promises that he was going to make his name great and he's going to have uh, numerous descendants like the dust of the land and the stars in the sky, he believed he embraced those promises. But at that point, when he embraced those promises, he didn't he even have one son. Forget about uh, the descendants like um, sand and uh, stars in the sky. He did not even have one, but he still decided to believe in God's promises. He embraced that hope. He set out on a journey and he was not disappointed. Three Abrahamic religions have conquered the world. We just witnessed an Abraham Accord that was signed here in this country recently. So Abraham is no more. But the promises that God gave him, it's still alive. It continues to live. So the hope that we've been given is anchored on the promises of God. And the word of God says the heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not. So you have a very firm promise that you're standing upon. So your hope is based on a very firm promise. Jesus endured the cross on the promise that he was, going to, he was going to rise on the third day and his death and resurrection was going to give salvation to the humanity, was going to bring salvation to the humanity. And that happened. The Roman Empire could not keep his tomb closed. They tried it, but on the third day, just as per the promise that was given by God, the tomb was opened and Jesus came out. I don't know about you. I can say that from my life, looking back at my life, God has been so faithful to me. So if you can testify that God has been faithful to you, I want you to take a moment and just thank God for his faithfulness. The second thing about hope is hope should be based on truth. We see a lot of people around us who are deceived by false hopes. Now, when we talk about the hope that we've been given through Jesus Christ, this is based on truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He didn't say, I'm one of the truths. He said, I am the truth. He was the ultimate truth. So you can be rest assured that your hope in Jesus is based on the ultimate truth. It is the truth that holds this universe together. The third thing about hope is, hope, is, uh, hope demands action. Now, hope is activated by action. If you hope for a success in your career, it wouldn't make any difference unless you act on it. So we heard about Abraham earlier. He acted on the hope that he embraced. He decided to obey God. He set out on a journey. He, step, he stepped out into the unknown. He followed God. So there was an action involved. So even when it comes to this new hope in Christ that we have received, God expects us to act on it, to pursue that relationship with him so that he can take us uh, to what he has promised us. He can take us to the destiny of our hope and it demands our action. So we need to pursue our relationship with God. I mentioned earlier about uh, the three qualifiers of a perfect gift. Now let me try and explain why this hope in Christ is a perfect gift. Now the first qualifier that we um, looked into was that it has to be all about the recipient. Now the word of God says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. So it was about us. So God say, sent us his son so, because he loved us. So it was all about us. It was to restore uh, a broken relationship, our broken relationship with God. He could have created a brand new humanity, a perfect humanity, 
but instead he wanted to give us an opportunity. He wanted to give us a chance. So it was all about us. The second qualifier was that it has to address some real needs of the recipient. Now, if we were to ask God for what we want, we would have definitely asked for some material blessings. But God being our creator, he knew what we lacked. He knew what we really needed, and that was salvation. We were destined to die. We were destined to an eternity without him. And our real need was to uh, restore that relationship with him so that we can enter an eternity with him. So he, he knows what we need more than we, do, more than we do. He knows you and me more than we know ourselves. And he saw our need and his perfect gift was given to meet that need, that desperate need of humanity. And the third qualifier we spoke about was the relevance of, of the gift, the durability of the relevance of the gift. Now, this new hope is not something that pops up every Christmas and disappears with the new year. It sticks with you throughout your life. And it doesn't even end with your life. It, 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 uh, it goes into eternity. The hope that we have been given through Christ is not just a hope for a few years, it's a hope for eternity. You may have been through a dark season in your life, a hopeless situation. You may have lost hope, but I'm here to tell you today that God wants to give his perfect gift of hope to you. And he wants you to embrace this hope. And he has got these promises lined up for you. Something that would take you into eternity. He wants you to spend the eternity with him. He wants to, to give you the joy of heaven. It doesn't really matter what you've been through. He can give you a new beginning. He can give you a fresh start. And God is asking you to embrace this new hope today. The word of God says, Forget the former things. Do not dwell in the past. I'm about to do something new. God is about to do something new in your life. He can mend your brokenness. He can give you a fresh beginning. The question is, are you willing to embrace this new hope in Jesus Christ? Do not let another Christmas pass by without embracing this perfect gift from God. Will you pray this short prayer with me? Father God, I thank you for this new hope that you've gifted me. I want this new hope to be the driving force of my life. I invite you to be my Lord and my Savior. Would you guide me? Would you give me a new beginning, Lord? In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed this prayer wholeheartedly for the first time, we would love to get in touch with you. We would love to help you on your spiritual journey. So please do contact us and God bless you. Have a great Christmas.